Okay, hello and greetings everyone. Okay, today's question. Why are there so many fake Tai Chi masters in the world? And for those of you who have were martial artists, you'll already know what I'm talking about as I say it. It's about the warrior mind. One moment. All right, let me go back to my childhood. Uh, I was in elementary school, I started doing karate. And uh, I have to show a lot of gratitude to the intelligence of my karate teacher. You know, the first lesson I went in, he partnered me up, he put a pad on my training partner's chest, and he said, punch it. And I punched the pad on the person's chest, and then he started making corrections. And as my body mechanics got corrected, then he started teaching me to express my will, my combat attitude, the warrior instinct to drive that punch through that person's chest. And as soon as I got it right, or close to it, he says to the student holding the pad, take the pad off your chest. And then, and he takes the pad off and says, okay, Mark, punch him. So I go to punch him on the chest and, uh, uh, and I pulled my punch just unconsciously. He says, no, no, punch him really hard. And, uh, and I went, okay, so I went to punch him really hard. And the receiver, my training partner, effortlessly deflected the punch. And I lost balance as that happened. I went, oh, I projected through and he was much higher ranked than me. And, uh, and then he said, do it again and again. And by the end of the lesson, I'm moving around, trying to drive my fist through this person's chest, and I was unable to. And then he reverses and says, okay, your turn. Teaches me how to defend. I've been watching this person defend my punch for the last uh, few rounds. And then I had to learn how to defend. It was a type of stress adaptation. I was adapting to the stress of someone trying to injure me and I would only be mildly injured if I didn't do the correct thing, but nevertheless, it was stress adaptation. After a few months of my classes being this kind of like a points karate environment of stress adaptation, how to defend against all these movements, it was very much a sparring atmosphere that I was, I was placed in. I found that I started to understand what it means to have a warrior spirit. If someone tries to project their will over you, harm you, bully you, your will comes up and manages it efficiently. Your mind is clear because you've gone through stress adaptation. After a person's done a thousand hours of sparring in this way, and many of the sparring exercises are uh, restrictive in that you're not going to get badly injured but you're going to get peppered you're going to feel pain if you make a mistake and what I found started to happen is an understanding this is the warrior spirit stress up adaptation to violence you move through this stage of emotional willpower as response the fire in you comes up and you uh, you you uh, puff your chest and you act like a man and you get angry back and then it transitions to this intelligence in what you're doing you start flowing intelligently and you intelligently respond to the violence once you've gone through this phase of of fire to flow water into this intelligence then there's this intuitive phase where you intuitively manage your partner's violence and you're still in the state of stress adaptation all the time you're adapting to violence and your warrior spirit becomes more manifested in your body it's your body as a survival mechanism a chemistry that activates that makes you rather smart and you're a warrior this 1,000 hour mark of sparring and, and stress adaptation, it brings you into a state 
of a physical manifestation of your warrior spirit. Your spirit concentrates itself in the body to be a warrior. This is the foundation of martial arts. If a person understands this idea, they can be a martial artist. Okay, so this is point one. If a person doesn't go through, through this materialization of spirit in body, through stress adaptation, they cannot call themselves a martial artist. So this is the first reason there's so many fake Tai Chi masters. They don't materialize their spirit in the body. It's just not a part of their, uh, their psychology. It's not a part of their training system. It's not their fault. There is, uh, it's their teacher's fault. It's not the student's fault. This conscious incompetence in the Tai Chi world, they consciously teach people not to be martial artists by giving them misinformation and not understanding the nature of evolution of the spirit, how the spirit functions, how to empower the student. And this has to be done very, very in intelligently. You have to put stress on the student so they don't get injured, so they don't give up, so they don't leave. They come back the next lesson and they grow incrementally. Some students, you can beat them with a stick and really push them. Other students, that's just simply not possible. If you tried to do that, you would, um, you, you'd, be, that you'd lose the student. So it takes a very, very intelligent teacher to create a warrior. And, and this ha has a balancing act of safety, uh, emotional stress, mental stress, physical stress. This is what materializes spirit in the body to build a martial artist. The art that I've seen that does this the best are the Japanese arts. Karate, these types of uh, systems. Judo, they, they materialize spirit in body and it works fantastically. Now, the modern era, as soon as um, I watched my first UFC fight uh, in, the, in the early 90s, it was like, oh no, I've got to learn how to fight on the ground now. And that intelligence inside the body obviously knew anyone who's gone through stress adaptation the body is going to say i'm going to get my ass kicked if i don't learn how to fight on the ground so it's a natural evolution of the martial arts world the group consciousness and it has to be done you have to learn those skills your body tells you your intuition tells you but the modern tai chi world there's too much cognitive dissonance they're, they're emotionally investing in an idea that power is going to come, something is going to come, they're going to get there, and this creates a fake Tai Chi master. The better the lineage, the higher the master, the more ego there is to protect, and the less chance they're going to expose themselves to the stresses that are needed to destroy cognitive dissonance, to destroy that delusion of, of where they think they are, versus get in there and develop yourself. So, this is the number one reason. There's a bunch of reasons. The number two reason is um, they're waiting for something to happen. They're, they're, the framework isn't taught traditionally and culturally in a way that you break down every principle precisely and study it and understand it. Everything's hidden. So this is the next reason there's so many fake masters. They'll use words like mind moves chi, chi moves body. Well, what are the body mechanics? What are the chi mechanics? What are the mind mechanics? And how do I develop them? You ask any Tai Chi master that and they can't answer the question. So this is the next problem. They're, they're always saying, oh, it'll come later. We'll do that later. We'll uh, later, 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 later. So this adds to the problem. It doesn't fix the problem. It adds to the problem. The next aspect, people don't have a clear framework. You engage in a Japanese martial art, beginner to black belt, everything you need to know is precise. You, every grading, this is what you have to know for the grading, that's what's next, that's what's next. And before you become a, a teacher, it's very, very clear on the outline of what skills have to be performed, what has to be demonstrated. But when it comes to internal martial arts, it's all, oh, no, that's secret. We'll, you'll teach you that later. 
and everything's hidden. So this high level of, of delusion that comes in where people are waiting for something rather than making things happen creates a culture of fake Tai Chi masters. Now the next uh, uh, thing that indicates a fake Tai Chi master is they're going to start denigrating other Tai Chi masters, saying, oh, this is wrong, it should be like this, it should be like that. And it's just a, a way of hiding their own inadequacies. If you know your shit, you share it, people understand it, they perform the skills, they get the skills, you don't need to put anyone else down. There's no need to denigrate anyone because you know your stuff. But as soon as someone starts playing the political game of, oh, my lineage is this, and this, we do it like that, that's not authentic, they don't know what they're talking about. They're projecting. Their own ego is inadequate, so they have to say those things. People who have the warrior spirit in the body are confident in themselves. They just share knowledge clearly and concisely, this is the way it is. They don't have to go through that nonsense of, of political um, uh, protection of themselves. That's what pussies do. Okay, the next reason why there's so many fake Tai Chi masters out there is they create a, an atmosphere of a safe space. Now, what happens when you want stress adaptation? You're not allowed to be safe. You need stress to adapt. You create a Tai Chi environment of a safe space where everyone's a gentleman, no warrior spirit arises, no stress adaptation arises, you know, with a classroom full of pussies, and, of course, then those people are going to become the political centers and denigrate other people and say, our way is true, to protect their own fragile, weak egos. Now, in saying that, you might be going, but you're denigrating these people. I am just pointing out what these people, why these people are acting in the way they do. It's not their fault, it's their teacher's fault. Their teacher created a safe space for them to train in, and now they've got no stress adaptation. They're not being challenged. They're not being punched in the face. Remember, we're talking about a martial art. Okay, so, the next problem that comes up in the Tai Chi world. There's a, a lack of clarity into measuring the metrics of, of developing yourself. How do you measure my powers getting stronger if you're not beating someone? The person in front of you has to have a lower skill than you in order for you to get a measurement of, yes, I'm better than them. When they get defeated, they go, I'm going to train harder so that doesn't happen again, and they get better, and then they'll beat a more junior person to them, and the stress cycle goes over and over and over and over again. So it's really important to have metrics to measurement stress adaptation and growth, and how well you're doing. Now, in finishing this video, there's a lot more other, other aspects to these fake masters that are out there. And the, the better the lineage, the more fake they are, I can guarantee you that, almost always. You'll notice that any of the masters who weren't fake, they fought. And the reason they could do that, say Master Wong Shin Qian, the lineage I came from, he was a master of white crane. He learned a fighting art to fight and he fought. And through that warrior spirit activation, he applied it to Tai Chi and he became great at Tai Chi. And this is the case with all the masters who fought. They did other martial arts and Tai Chi made their art better. So if your Tai Chi isn't taking care of stress adaptation to make you a good fighter, you're never going to be a good fighter through Tai Chi because that component has been lost. How to activate spirit in the body does not exist anymore. It's gone. Okay, next thing to look at. Look in the mirror. How many of these pointers um, gave you discomfort when, as I talked about them? Did you feel, oh, yeah, I haven't gone through stress adaptation. Can you look in the mirror and say, if my family got attacked, I could wipe out the attackers in a few seconds. Can you honestly say that to yourself? I had a three second rule. I'd go, okay, there's 10 guys, three seconds each, 30 seconds, they're all gonna be unconscious. And that was my attitude. I'd switch on my combat attitude. Fight didn't even have to happen. The people backed down. You've gotta believe in yourself as a warrior 
that you can protect your family, you can protect your friends, you can protect yourself if you get into an encounter. And that has to be so overwhelming, it's almost e egotistical, but it's what makes a warrior. You look into the eyes of a warrior and go, oh shit, I am in trouble. That's number one. Look in the mirror. Can you honestly say that about yourself? Look in the mirror. How emotionally reactive are you to violence? Have you gone through enough stress adaptation to move from a fire response to violence to a water response to violence? Where you just flow with it and control it to an air response where you behave intelligently and there's no emotion, ch emotional charge in it. Look in the mirror and say to yourself, how well have I adapted? The next thing to look at when you look in the mirror, if you answered, no, I don't have that worry spirit in my body. No, I can't defend my family. No, I don't have emotional equanimity. If you answered no to any of those, well, you can do something about it. So let's say you're 70 years old and uh, you go, oh, I'm way too old to go through all that sparring nonsense. That's not true. Remember, a good teacher, a knowledgeable teacher, is going to give you stress that's safe for your body, that your mind is going to get stressed, your emotions are going to get stressed, and a certain degree of physical threat in order for you to adapt to. It doesn't have to be violence. It doesn't have to be all out. It has to be catered to you. So a good teacher is very sensitive to how to activate the warrior spirit. And if you see a 70-year-old guy in a karate school activating, stimulating warrior spirit, well done. I lift my hat to you. Now, these fake Tai Chi masters have too much ego to protect. So guess what? They're pussies. They're cowards. They are not going to go in, into an environment where they have to stress adapt. They're trying to protect their fragile egos. This is really sad and pathetic. It's just the way it is. So if you're looking in the mirror and going, oh shit, I can't do that. Hey, don't be a pussy. Go to your MMA school once a week, stress adapt. One year later, you're going to be able to apply your Tai Chi principles. Five years later, you're going to be really good at it. So I'm using hard words here because I want hard emotional reaction from you to look at the mirror of your soul. Who are you? Are you a warrior? Are you a pussy? Pick a side and do something about it to make yourself a more powerful warrior.